Hi, this is Terry Gray with Palomar College Academic Technology and welcome to the Whirlwind Tour of Windows Live Movie Maker. I have Windows Live Movie Maker up on my screen and the first thing you may notice if you're a user of Microsoft Office products is that it uses a ribbon. At the top of the screen you see that rectangular area is known as the ribbon where all of the program commands are stored. And it has a home tab the uh, most used commands are on the home tab then it has an animations tab visual effects tab project tab and view tab let's go back to that home tab here you'll also notice to the left of the home tab there's a blue colored tab it doesn't have a name uh, just called movie maker but in the office programs this would correspond to what is called the file tab or backstage view they don't call it that for some reason in Movie Maker. And it contains project related commands, publishing commands, saving commands, import commands, and program options. Okay, we'll explore those later. Above the ribbon, there is something called the Quick Access Toolbar, and you see a little Save Project command up there. Uh, and it's a place for you to store shortcuts for your most used commands. If, for example, I used my webcam video all the time, I could right-click it, add to Quick Access Toolbar, and there it is. So even if I'm over on the View tab, I can click it to add a uh, webcam video. To remove assets from the Quick Access Toolbar, right-click and choose Remove from Quick Access Toolbar. To be honest, there are so few commands in this program and they contain so few variations that you really don't need that quick access toolbar. Below the ribbon, the screen is comprised of two areas. The preview pane on the left, where you'll preview your video. That's what that big rec black rectangle is all about there. And below it, there's a uh, timer showing current point in video and total length of video a full screen control, uh, click this control or press F11 to view your video full screen. Once viewing full screen, press escape to get back to this view. A scrubber, that is you can pull this playhead through any point and stop uh, to find a location in the video, little scrubber control, and a play control at the bottom. On the right half, hand half of the screen there is uh, what's called the storyboard pane where all of your assets will reside, your video clips that you're going to be editing. Uh, and not just video clips, it could be uh, JPG or PNG uh, pictures, photographs, artwork, that sort of thing. The two uh, areas are divided by a faint gray line uh, and when you place your cursor over it you can drag that cursor back and forth to give them relative uh, parts of the, of the screen, the editing screen. Down below there's a bar if there's any status commands that will appear on the left hand side of this bar at the bottom and uh, there's two controls on the right hand side one is to uh, control the size of the thumbnail that you view and the other is to zoom uh, the length of the um, of the time uh, of the storyboard line up this will make more sense after I load an asset which I'm about to do now on the right hand storyboard side you'll see that uh, there is a click here to browse for videos and photos link uh, that will only appear for the first asset. You can click it, find an asset, and here's an MOV file I want to edit. Click open, and there's my asset. And now that command has disappeared from the storyboard pane. To add other video assets, I would have to come up to Add Videos and Photos here. So I can add still photos and videos and often often will and do uh, throughout the course of these lessons. Okay, now I can talk about these uh, controls because the change thumbnail size allows me to change to extra small icons. You can see the effect. Extra large icons and the icons are enormous here. I'm going to go back to small icons because my single clip fits entirely on the uh, in the storyboard pane at small icons. Now, this other control is to zoom the time scale. 
and there are no indicators to, to tell you how long the time scale is now. We know our video that we're working on is 2 minutes and 48 seconds, 67 one hundredths of a second long, uh, but I can physically view that clip in a longer view if I need to get to a precise point of the video. If I want to click into the video at just that point at 1 minute 45 and 67 hundred seconds or a much smaller view of it. I'm going to zoom all the way back so it's a single thumbnail. We'll just start about midway here but you can control the size or the length of your uh, storyboard line here and the size of the icons themselves here. Okay, now that we have an asset loaded, we can see the more commands are lit up here. Our auto movie themes, rotation, uh, which, um, which you use quite a bit if you bring in cell phone uh, data to rotate it to the correct orientation. Your quick publish commands here and your save movie commands. These are all the most common commands and they're all on the home tab. Also, you'll notice that when I have a video asset loaded, I now have a video tools tab up here with an edit tab uh, below it. This is what they call a um, tabs on demand. When I select an asset, I get a tab to work with that asset and it will have one or more tabs below it. In this case, I have an edit tab that allow me, allows me to uh, trim or split the video. I could split it at that point if I chose, delete part of it and so forth, speed it up or fade in and out on the video. Okay. Now I'm going back to my home tab. If I wanted to add music to this command, uh, to this video, uh, I have a two-part control here. The upper part will just simply add music to the entire project, but if I click the lower part of this uh, this icon and you can see uh, it has a lighter and darker shading to indicate it's a two-part command I can add music at the current point and that means wherever this insertion point is this black vertical line I can add music from that point let's go ahead and do that there's a music mp3 file and you can see that Movie Maker calculated the amount of time remaining in the video and adjusted the music track accordingly. Now, since we're going to be concentrating on academic uses of this program, we're not going to spend a lot of time talking about music. Bear in mind that there is no audio narration tool in the program. Also, on the Home tab, you can um, add a title, add an overlay caption anywhere in the video, add credits usually at the end but it can be anywhere and notice that with our music selected we have a music tools tab now and that lets us adjust the ending and starting points and fade in and fade out and control the volume and so on that's how it works and that's our quick whirlwind tour in under nine minutes of the Windows Live Movie Maker user interface next lesson we'll get busy on a project